Feedback. Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pinda. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. Uh, it's you liberals who have lifted them up, Howard. Paul, you conservatives make a mistake. You can't afford to strangle hope in people. Without hope? People become dangerous. No, Howard. You liberals have let them invade our society. You give them jobs, political jobs. Paul, you missed the point. It's only the smart ones we move up. <laughs> that makes it even worse. Oh, no, you know, we have to move them up. If we leave a smart one in the ghetto, he might develop into a leader against us. But if we raise him up into white society, we neutralize him. He feels compelled to try to act like us. He loses his identity and... Uh, his racial anger, if he has any. He becomes alien to his brothers. They realize he sold them out and they grow to hate him. He becomes worthless to them and safe for us. Uh, no, thank you. In fact, in his love for the creature comforts, except for his color, he's become one of us. And we are live. Happy Monday to all of you. And thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Theo Broughton, co-founder of Hood Research, and happy to be here on this Monday morning. I want to thank those of you who uh, have been kind enough to help sponsor this program. And uh, for those of you who are considering helping to sponsor the program, please make your check or money order out to Hood Research. Or if you prefer, you can make it out to WHPR Broadcasting Company. We have no objection to that. But we do ask that you mail it to Hood Research at P.O. Box 4416, Detroit, Michigan, 48204. Again, P.O. Box 4416, Detroit, Michigan, 48204. And I um, want to say good morning to Gladys and to Clementine and Vera and Ron and, and to Tom and Les and Jay and... The Go ahead. Uh, hello, feedback uh, <laughs> viewers and listeners. Uh, I want to say a shout out to Ruth Ann and thank you for the information. Sister Jackie, Brother Shane, uh, Sister uh, Jackie, uh, uh, two Jackies there it is, uh, Cheryl D, Brother Fred, Brother Smith Bay. And I uh, want to say happy birthday to Detroit. Today is the 306th birthday of Detroit, Michigan, from 1701 to now. Mm, That's, mm. Right. That's right. Somebody else is having a birthday today. Let me think. Hmm. I believe it is... Uh, huh. Elijah. 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 No. Let me think about it. I can see him... Clearly, now the rain is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, let me think of his name. Um, hmm. I talked to him over the weekend, and today is actually his birthday. Um, there are a number of um, uh, folks I've been talking to recently with their birthday. Uh, hmm. I would think his name, and I want to tell him happy birthday as soon as I remember. We... Um, have so much going on in this community and we have a guest with us this morning in uh, Gene Cunningham and uh, he wants to uh, share a lot of the information that he has uncovered and information that you need to know. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, tell us first who is Gene Cunningham? Uh, I'm a former uh, employee of Detroit City Council. I was a research assistant uh, to uh, Kay Everett from uh, 95 to 2001 mm -hmm. and earlier from 91 to 93. And I also worked for Councilman Barbara Rose, Councilwoman Barbara Rose Collins uh, from 2002 to 2005 mm -hmm. as the Director Facilitator for Detroit City Council's Task Force on Global Trade. Mm -hmm. I do remember that, yes. Go ahead. 
Also, uh, currently, I'm a member of the uh, Detroit Association of Realtors, mm -hmm. uh, Government Affairs, and uh, uh, I believe I've been on your program before mm -hmm. talking about uh, the long-standing petition that we have had since uh, May of 2011 uh, in order to resuscitate and implement the uh, nuisance abatement repair to own program, mm -hmm. also known as Ordinance Number 7 797, Chapter 14, Article 10. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, as, you, as you know, Theo, this was promulgated by Irma Henderson and Marianne Mahaffey mm -hmm. uh, back in 1983 mm -hmm. and was uh, revised as, uh, uh, in 1987. And under this ordinance, uh, citizens of the city mm -hmm. would be able to uh, reclaim a, a vacant property that was uh, tax delinquent, mm -hmm. uh, structurally sound, mm -hmm. uh, uh, open to trespass, mm. and, and uh, had the ability to uh, bring that property back up to code in a certain amount of time. I think it was three years before. Now, you're talking about uh, abandoned property that had been uh, taken by the county? Uh, this was for both uh, public and private property. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Okay. And the ordinance has been uh, tested uh, several times over the years. Okay. And has uh, always stood the test. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, also under the ordinance, uh, the, the nuisance abatement contractor, the citizen that was putting the sweat equity into bringing that building back up to code. Mm -hmm. uh, once they uh, performed that and it was inspected uh, and the work was found to be satisfactory, the nuisance abatement contractor would get uh, from the city a quit claim deed. Mm -hmm. uh, and th that was uh, the first part of the deficiency of the ordinance uh, in that a quit claim deed is worth about a roll or two of toilet paper. Mm. Uh, because the old owner in the chain of title would come back typically, find that uh, his home had been repaired, mm -hmm. and would uh, uh, evict, kick out the uh, nuisance abatement contractor. Oh, wow. Uh, under, under those circumstances, the city's law department was supposed to uh, come back and, and uh, file a counterclaim mm -hmm. to keep those people in their homes, or at the very least, get reimbursement. For, for the repairs, the repairs. That they had made. Mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, that never happened. Oh wow! Uh, the other deficiency uh, was that uh, big deficiency in the ordinance was that uh, when the new abatement contractor uh, went moved into the house and began to do the work, that sometimes their sweat equity was not enough to bring the property back up to code, and the city was unable to uh, provide them with any other kind of financing so that they could uh, finish the job. Mm. And uh, those are the two uh, deficiencies, particularly that the Detroit Association of Realtors, uh, since 2011, has tried to uh, engage the city, uh, knowing that the city no longer has the capacity to run this program. Mm. Uh, and, and that is, as realtors, uh, we work before a deal is closed to uh, secure the titles and deliver mm -hmm. a marketable deed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And th the second uh, 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 deficiency is that if the uh, work is too much for the sweat equity of the new abatement contractor to finish the job, to help them secure uh, both uh, uh, in the private and the public sector means of assistance so that they could uh, have the financing to finish. 203Ks, home repair loans, et cetera. And uh, uh, we were uh, both trying to uh, get the monies that were not expended in the empowerment zone mm -hmm. under mm -hmm. the American Tax Relief Act, mm -hmm. which was uh, over a billion dollars, mm -hmm. and oh. included a, a quarter of a billion dollars in empowerment zone uh, federal bonds, mm -hmm. and uh, about twice that much in uh, wage credits and tax credits. Mm. Uh, the wage credits could have paid individuals up to an extra $3,000 mm -hmm. toward their pay per year. 
and uh, uh, the tax credits were uh, very generous for any uh, uh, small minority businesses, nonprofit uh, corporations mm -hmm. to uh, be able to uh, secure that funding in order to complete those jobs. Well, let me ask you this. Um, <coughs> was there an amount um, of, uh, you say a person put in sweat equity, okay, that's mm -hmm. the work that they're doing themselves. Is there a dollar amount attached to that? That was required, or percentage? Uh, uh, or uh, not really, because okay. uh, every house uh, is, is in a, a different situation. Right. Uh, you might get a, f a, f a house that's uh, been freshly abandoned, fresh foreclosure, okay. where, where the house is still intact. Okay. Uh, okay. But we know that the longer a house sits, mm -hmm. uh, the more it becomes an attractive nuisance, for uh, break-ins, mm -hmm. vandalism, oh, yeah. and people that strip homes, right, uh, particularly right. of uh, furnaces, hot water heaters, right. plumbing, electrical fixtures, mm -hmm. and, and of course time and the weather mm. uh, also does a job yes. uh, to the point where uh, uh, it becomes necessary to demolish the structure. Gotcha. And, and that's the key thing that I want to talk to you uh, today about. Sure. Uh, uh, is that we knew uh, years ago that the money from the uh, TARP, uh, known as the Hardest Hit Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, what does TARP stand for? Uh, t uh, uh, troubled Asset Relief Program. Troubled that, Asset Relief Program, that, okay. That, that, was, that was the money that the banks, mm -hmm. uh, uh, basically the nine largest banks in the country, uh, uh, were forced to pay mm -hmm. in a, a, a settlement that came from the uh, Obama administration, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with uh, the whole, uh, what they call the robo-signing, uh, the, the, of the oh, uh, uh, yeah. collateralized debt obligations, yes. mortgage-backed securities. It, it, mm. it, it, it's a long, convoluted story, but basically, that was the phenomenon that uh, started mm -hmm. the last recession, mm -hmm. uh, the recession that a lot of people are still in. Right. Uh, in uh, 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And the fraud where they were signing the names of the homeowners without their uh, approval or their knowledge. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and all of it was based on uh, uh, the uh, uh, adjustable rate mortgage, uh, where the mortgage payment would balloon up after the first uh, two, three years that uh, the uh, uh, mortgager was in the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of this, uh, the mortgages uh, went haywire and, and uh, went above the ability of people to pay. And then when mm -hmm. the bubble burst, uh, they found that, you know, the mortgage note was more than what the house was worth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the housing values had been inflated so that uh, higher amounts of mortgages uh, could be written. Uh, mm. So uh, because of uh, the bailout that uh, the banks received, uh, the Obama administration was able to, uh, uh, after litigation, to secure uh, uh, monies from the banks to keep people in their homes for mortgage forgiveness, uh, uh, for uh, uh, mortgage modification, and even for uh, against tax foreclosure, municipal tax foreclosure. Now, unfortunately, uh, the city of Detroit, uh, and the city of Detroit is not alone in this uh, other cities and states have done this. Mm -hmm. uh, they made uh, uh, regulations that were too difficult for a lot of people to apply uh, for these monies uh, to repair their homes and to stay in their homes. And so uh, uh, as a result of that, uh, when people weren't able to uh, uh, access that money, that money piled up and uh, municipalities like Detroit decided to use the money for demolition, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a two-edged sword uh, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, the demolition contractors were able to charge by the cubic foot and not the square foot, which uh, uh, had the effect of uh, doubling almost right. the amount of uh, money do that they know, were getting for demolition. Yeah, do you know where they got that idea from? Nobody ever um, uh, um, uh, measured by cubic foot before. Was was that some some fraudulent trick that somebody came up with? 
It uh, certainly sounds like it. Th the last time we were before city council, that was something that uh, the city council was supposed to be investigating. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, 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 appealed many times to come back before council mm -hmm. uh, since November of last year, mm -hmm. and uh, we have yet to get a hearing. Mm. After uh, filing, refiling on our petition 2977 three times mm -hmm. and, and making a personal appearance before the public comment section mm -hmm. of the uh, uh, City Council's uh, uh, Committee of the Whole, uh, okay. they're, they're going to go into recess uh, this coming Tuesday, mm. and uh, we still have, have not been able to uh, get a rehearing. Uh, okay, on so that. now these people are running for office. Is there a particular council member? Who's supposed to lead that uh, investigation? Oh. Maybe, maybe they should be put on Facebook and uh, social media uh, oh. since they're running for office, not taking care of the business of the residents. Well, uh, Theo, you know, uh, uh, since they went to districts, mm -hmm. uh, each uh, district council person is responsible for their district. Yes. Now, now there's, there's uh, two uh, uh, members who are at large. Okay. And of course, there's a president and a pro tem. Okay. And and of course, there's a committee structure. Right uh, now, that's what I'm Originally, uh, we went up under the uh, uh, budget, finance, and audit. Okay. Well, uh, which came from uh, uh, Council Pro Tem Cushenberry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say that he he was uh, uh, very instrumental in at least getting us to the table. Mm -hmm. However. Uh, the response of the uh, mayor's administration has been to uh, 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 not really uh, bargain with the Detroit Association of Realtors in good faith. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I should perhaps give a timeline on this okay. as to what happened uh, when we originally uh, filed the petition back in May 2011. Uh, as you know, uh, Dave Bing was mayor then. and. Uh, uh, after a long, uh, again, a long series of hearings before City Council, uh, which at that time was chaired by uh, Gary Brown, mm. uh, uh, we finally got uh, uh, serious negotiations, we thought were serious negotiations, uh, with the Bing administration uh, in the fall of uh, 2012. Uh, however, after about four or five meetings, where we were actually able to, uh, with the assistance of the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization, put uh, three dozen uh, families into homes uh, to show that you know the program does work. And I remember, uh, as a staffer on city council, that uh, we helped uh, several uh, constituents uh, in the program that did work at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, however, once the uh, city went into a consent agreement. Uh, uh, later in the fall of 2012, that led to the uh, emergency management, that led to the bankruptcy, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, n has now culminated in the Financial Review Commission, which was set up by the emergency manager and the governor uh, uh, to oversee the uh, finances of the city, but which also, uh, to be tr truthful, uh, actually makes policy. Uh, uh, a lot of the things that we've tried to do have been superseded. Uh, the Bing administration, uh, without uh, warning, uh, broke off the negotiations with the Detroit Association of Realtors. Mm. Uh, th those negotiations were never restarted again. Uh, we were able to, uh, we thought, uh, after the hearings before the Budget Finance and Audit Committee mm -hmm. of City Council, to uh, jumpstart those negotiations again mm -hmm. with uh, the uh, Duggan administration. Well, tell and that us, was, I'm sorry, tell mm -hmm. us what exactly do the realtors want to do? Okay. Is well, this a group of African American or is it a mixed group? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, this is primarily a group of uh, African American uh, realtors okay. uh, based in the city of Detroit. Okay. Uh, we also have our sister organization, uh, NAREB, mm -hmm. uh, that Ray Jenkins used to belong to. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and NAREB goes back. Uh, to uh, the, uh, the days of uh, World War II and before, okay. when uh, uh, blacks couldn't become members mm -hmm. of uh, real of realtor associations. Associate. Right. And uh, what, is, what does NAREP stand for? Uh, National Association of Real Estate Brokers. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, 
we were able to uh, restart negotiations uh, with uh, the Duggan administration uh, uh, in the fall of uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm sorry, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but unfortunately, uh, those collapsed after a few months because, as I said, uh, they were not negotiating in good faith, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, we kept uh, went back to city council. Uh, we wanted a full hearing, uh, not just uh, you know where you come and they're in the, uh, uh, the regular committee of the whole room, but actually at the Irma Henderson Auditorium, where we could get as many uh, community organizations, as many citizens involved in hearing uh, just how uh, the Detroit Association of Realtors and our affiliated organizations uh, could help uh, uh, restart the nuisance abatement repair to own program using uh, the monies from the hardest hit funds uh, both to keep people in their homes and to repair these homes uh, because uh, what we've been doing uh, uh, even though the city says that they're fighting blight uh, our policies the city's policies are actually creating more blight not only through tax foreclosure mm -hmm. but through water shutoffs oh, because yeah. as you know when when a house is uh, shut off from water Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it, it, it practically becomes uninhabitable. Right. And, and uh, that also begins the process of the house uh, uh, becoming stripped, becoming vandalized, and eventually being a candidate uh, for demolition. One of the largest uh, uh, demolition contractors, Homerick, is uh, also responsible for turning off people's water. So, oh. of course, there's no incentive for them uh, to do anything but uh, turn off uh, as many uh, uh, customers from water as they can, which uh, just creates uh, future business for them. Now, I'm curious, uh, the, back in the 80s, let's say mid-80s, I was actually looking at a property over on uh, Outer Drive, but actually it was uh, on a side street, but, but it, the side of the house bordered on Outer Drive, just near the Southfield Freeway. Mm -hmm. And I was doing it under the nuisance abatement thing at that time. And I didn't pursue it fully, but the house, as you said, was open to trespass because my son, who was probably four or five years old at the time, uh, when I saw the house, I figured, this is a nice area. Let me try to investigate it. And I did see that you could walk in. And, you know, of course, there was damage to it and everything. But now, as you say, the ordinance, they're not enforcing that. Is it still on the books? And is it still something that if a person found a property open to trespass that they could maybe at least petition under the nuisance abatement ordinance to get it? Well, or, I'm, I'm yeah. glad you asked that question. Uh, yes, the ordinance is still on the books. It has withstood over the years several legal challenges and remained intact. Uh, but what happened uh, during the uh, Kilpatrick administration in 2004-2005, uh, the city stopped implementing the ordinance. Uh, the Building and Safety Engineering Department, which was uh, one of the departments primarily responsible, along with the Planning and Development Department, uh, lost the capacity to be able to uh, uh, run the programs uh, effectively. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that was when, uh, in uh, t the fall of 2009, uh, I and uh, uh, several other uh, people who were uh, invited by uh, former council member Joan Watson to come before her housing task force. And, and that was when the idea percolated because the, the whole crisis was fresh. And by the way, the housing crisis that swept the country in 07, 08, actually started in Detroit much earlier, mm -hmm. uh, 04, oh, we, we could see it coming, mm -hmm. 05, 06, it was in full swing, and then it was beginning to spread out uh, through the rest of the country. Uh, but yes, uh, that ordinance uh, is still on the books, uh, uh, and as we uh, said to the uh, mayor's administration before, to the Bing administration and the Duggan administration, the laws and ordinances of the city of Detroit is not a smorgasbord. Uh, you are sworn to do your best mm -hmm. to uphold all those laws and ordinances as well as the Constitution of the state and federal government. It's not where you get to pick and choose which one you're going to do and which one y you're not going to do. You have to make every best effort. And that's why as a former uh, council staffer, I knew that uh, the realtors had the capacity uh, mm -hmm. to do the things that the city could no longer do. Now we've got right. a... Uh, uh, 
Oh. Our lines are full, basically. Oh, answer his questions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? You're on the Hello? air. Call- yes, you're on the air. Good morning. I-, I can hardly hear you. I'm watching you from uh, Comcast Channel 91. Oh, okay. This is Beverly. How are you? Oh, fine. Yeah, Beverly Kendall Walker. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yes, you've done a lot of research in this area as well and on the tax foreclosures uh, for the county. One of my former co And Gene Cunningham oh. is an expert in that area as well. We work together. Oh, okay. So we know what we speak of. Right, right. Okay. Yes. You, so you have I'm some. I'm looking forward to uh, actually, you know, uh, what the Lord is going to bring in terms of city council. Right. People with institutional knowledge on the ta- at the table. Mm-hmm. And so um, just the opportunity is right there in front of us people to vote the right people on council. Yeah, we, we can need restore that. some stuff that has been happening to us. Right. And this is one area that Jean is talking about. Right. That ordinance is still on the books. The land bank authority has too much authority. We have to snatch that mm-hmm. back and restore what we already have. Well, you know, whenever I hear the word authority, a <laughs> bell goes off. And authority is a private group of people <laughs> who take our public tax dollars and give them to their personal friends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I don't see this as any different. That's uh, right. Mm-mm. That's right. But, and I, uh, I can hardly hear you, so I'm going to just hang up the phone. Oh, but wow. Yeah, Gene Cunningham, you're right on point, right on point. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for thank your you, research for you know, uh, revealing stuff like this to us. Okay. All right, thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, Beverly Kendall Walker, a candidate for Detroit City Council, with a lot of uh, expertise. And I didn't know that she was a co-worker of yours, Jean Cunningham. Oh, yes. Hmm. She worked for Clyde Cleveland when I was working for Uh, Clyde. Oh, okay. Next uh, caller. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? This is Tyrone Internet. Mm -hmm. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, uh, I can hear you now, but it was very low at mm. first. Oh, okay. Now, uh, I, I, uh, to, to your guest, Mr. Cunningham, old friend of mine, under the situation yeah. where if the financial review board don't have a expiration date, but control the last decisions what's going on in Detroit of uh, legislative and executive, and we don't con- don't have to control about income tax or property tax that goes to the treasurer. Under that autocratic uh, form of government that we under, and the land bank has been separated by Duggan, and they control all the un- unoccupied land and ho- houses. What good is it to go to city council? Should we be fighting the 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 the, the, the review board controlling and our tax dollars in there? Should we be fighting that still accepting the second class citizenship and going to the city council that's really got no power? Tyrone, you make an excellent point. Uh, uh, by the way, it's called the Financial Review Commission. Uh, if you Goog- yeah, right. If you Google that, uh, go into Financial Review Commission. It's an arm of the uh, state treasurer's office. And you're quite correct. Uh, uh, the Financial Review Commission is supposed to, after three years of, uh, and this was under the grand bargain. Some people call it the grand theft bargain mm-hmm. negotiated in Mackinac. Right. Uh, that uh, after three years of a balanced budget, the Financial Review Commission is supposed to return a uh, superintending control to the elected officials of the city. And that's supposed to happen January 1st, 2018. However, uh, I've been to uh, several Financial Review Commission meetings. Uh, they meet on the last Monday of the month at the old General Motors building. Uh, they have two separate meetings, the first one at 1 o'clock deals with the city. The second one at 2 o'clock deals with the uh, Detroit's uh, Public School Board, which uh, they also have superintending control right. over. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, uh, that's what we've been urging uh, all the citizens of this city, that if you vote for any candidate or incumbent running for mayor, city council, or city clerk, that 
if the Financial Review Commission does not cede total control back to the citizens and its elected officials on January 1st, 2018, then you have to ask that person you're voting for what is going to be their response. What are they going to do? Are they going to just sit back, uh, take their pay paycheck and let it happen? Or are they going to take active steps to remove the Financial Review Commission from the affairs of our city? Are they going to take legal action? Uh, are they going to fight it in the courts? Are, are, they, are they going to uh, take it to the uh, uh, the court of public opinion. It has to be an active resistance. Uh, 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 I was telling a reporter from the Metro Times a couple of weeks ago uh, when he was talking about the 50th anniversary of uh, the rebellion, uh, we called it an insurrection back then, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, the rebellion has to start at the ballot box. A as Malcolm uh, would say, uh, is it the ballot? Or the bullet, the bullet yeah. you know, what's going to be most effective? And I would urge everyone to take that ballot and use it like a bullet and make sure that the people we put in, uh, whether they're the people that are there now or, or uh, challengers that, uh, that are active, that they take an active position on removing the control of the Financial Review Commission on January 1st, 2018, uh, 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 as the, the grand theft bargain uh, had already stated. Gene, get, leave your number, because you are correct. If we don't fight that, we're accepting second-class citizenship, and anybody running for office definitely must fight that, what you're saying. So give me your number. And give, it, give it your number out so I can contact you. Oh, okay. Uh, you can contact the Detroit Association of Realtors. At Detroit as, yes, Association of Realtors. Of a uh, real okay, Gene. And, and our number is three one three nine six two one three one three, and uh, one let, three one three. Yes, yes, sir. And and okay, uh, 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 and and when you call your city council people and your mayor, let them know that you support our petition twenty nine seventy seven, and that we must have a full hearing on this so that we could we could present the outlines of what our program is. We have a 10-point program, what we intend to do, and challenge the city, particularly uh, of the, the, the mayor's departments, to respond in a positive fashion. Because a lot of these demolitions uh, are, are, are taking place without uh, prior inspections to uh, 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 make sure that the, the properties are not structurally sound and have to be torn down. Hmm. Uh, uh, you uh, got uh, my full support. I'm going to hang up, Gene, and listen to you, and uh, I'm going to be giving you a call. You thank, you, Tyrone. Support, thank, thank you, Tyrone. Thank you, Tyrone. Just what you say. You know, it, it sounds like um, the contractors have gotten together with the mayor and developers and decided what area they want. And then when, when you get the boundaries of that area, they just go and tear down everything in between there. You're saying some of the properties they're tearing down are not in so much disrepair. So if that's the truth, then it says to me that they are picking out uh, land between X, X Street and X, you know, and just tearing down, clearing everything in there so that when the developer comes in, he'll say, oh, I want to buy this section of land over here. But he doesn't have to uh, clear the land. It's already been cleared at our expense, it seems. Uh, well, yes, uh, you're quite correct, uh, Theo. Uh, you may recall that uh, back in 2012, uh, they came out with uh, this book called the uh, Detroit Future City Plan. And uh, according to that, uh, th they've divided the city into uh, neighborhoods that they think are going to be too expensive market-wise right. uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. uh, to bring back and neighborhoods that they want to concentrate on that they feel uh, that they can make uh, more money. So uh -huh. these are all, all market-driven mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. These aren't uh, 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 people, citizen-driven mm -hmm. decisions. Wow. And, and that's why you get a selective uh, demolition in certain neighborhoods where, uh, of course, it's, it's more money for a contractor if you're charging by the cubic foot to take down 
a uh, brick structure, three bedroom, basement, two car garage, et cetera, mm -hmm. uh, than it is uh, to go to a, uh, uh, a, a more working class neighborhood and take down uh, a two bedroom frame, uh, maybe with a basement or not, maybe with a garage or not. Uh, uh, obviously, you know, if, if you're a demolition contractor, you're going to uh, go to uh, where it makes the most money. Right. And of course, uh, when you take uh, prime neighborhoods and tear down selective housing, that makes all the other housing worth that much more money. Mm -hmm. got, uh, Get some money on the land. Oh yeah, full, full okay, staff. Keep going. Okay. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you give us your name and how you're viewing us, please? Good you're morning, uh, Comcast ninety-one. I'm an Ethiopian. Okay. And I want to ask uh, your guest there, who is just full of information. I'm so glad to uh, be tuning in to hear him this morning. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the buildings that are open to tr trespass uh, left in the city of Detroit, um, and I have another question, too. Um, has the city identified every building, hasn't the city identified every building in the city? Oh. in the city and kind of tag them, mm -hmm. put them into some kind of uh, mm -hmm. queue, so to speak, so. to control mm -hmm. them. So if me or you come in and see a building that's open trespass, it's not available anymore. Mm -hmm. That's uh, also a very excellent question, and uh, uh, I thank you. I, I've had a lot of friends from uh, Ethiopia in the days when I was uh, working on the Global Trade Task Force. Uh, that w was one of our, uh, our primary uh, missions was to build uh, trade and uh, uh, tourism with countries on the African continent uh, and in the Caribbean. But yes, uh, it's been an unfortunate uh, component of the Duggan administration that, as Theo mentioned earlier, uh, the Land Bank Authority which started out with uh, only four or five people, mm -hmm. has grown exponentially to over uh, about 135, 140 people. Wait, 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 wait. 135 to 140 people working in the land bank? Yes, ma'am. On the mayor's payroll? Mayor Mike Duggan has a payroll for 135 to 140 people in the land bank? Well, our, our tax dollars do go to, to support that, yes. Uh. And, uh -huh. and, and several of the top echelon people mm -hmm. are making uh, six-figure salaries. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them uh, don't live in the city of Detroit. Oh, my, but, my. But uh, as a result of uh, the process, and, and this has been uh, the complaint of the uh, Detroit Association of Realtors, mm -hmm. is that uh, both the Wayne County auction and the land bank auctions are, are actually rigged in, uh, uh, we feel, in favor of investors. Mm -hmm. uh, over the opportunities of uh, uh, people who want to own and live in uh, those properties. Mm. And uh, uh, this also has the side effect of pushing up uh, the cost of rents. Uh, when uh, this process started, uh, you could uh, uh, rent a fairly good home in the city for around five, six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it's more like seven fifty, eight, mm -hmm. eight fifty nine. Mm -hmm. and, and this prices a lot of people uh, out of the oh, market. Oh, yes. There, there's an apartment builder on Woodward near, uh, I think it's near Mac or Martin Luther King Boulevard there, where they're raising the uh, rental to saying that they're, they're uh, getting market rate ready. Quickly, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. uh, I wanted so to ask uh, Mr. Yes. Kennedy yes. Um as far as your hearing before the city council, that clearly is uh, the city council president, Brenda Jones's responsibility, and I encourage her to allow this to happen. My last question to you is that a financial review, state financial review commission meetings that happen, you say, at the end of each month, great information. Who makes up that commission and who appoints them? And thank you so much for having uh, this gentleman on. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're appointed by the governor, uh, uh, and they're made up uh, mostly of people from the Treasury Department. Uh, mm -hmm. They serve at the pleasure of uh, Governor Snyder, and, and uh, they, they do meet on the last uh, Monday of every month at, on the first floor of the old General Motors building 
on the boulevard and uh, second. And uh, they actually have two meetings. The first one, as I said, was uh, for their oversight of the city, and the second one is for the, their oversight of the uh, school board. So now that's the Financial Review Board. Commission. I'm sorry, Financial mm -hmm. Review Commission. Mm -hmm. are, are they um, um, in overlapping with the land bank uh, um, staff, if you will? Uh, Do they overlap? These are all things that uh, rather work in unison. Mm. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. a as I referred to before, mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. all part of that uh, grand bargain. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, uh, the, the thing that you know uh, took a lot of uh, the assets of the city away uh, in return for uh, getting the city back to fiscal health. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, there were a lot of things that were ignored uh, in that, gotcha. in, uh, including uh, what happened uh, a few years ago when uh, citizens of this city uh, voted a, a massive bond uh, issue uh, that was to uh, uh, repair the mm -hmm. infrastructure of the water and sewerage department. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, those uh, bonds were uh, somehow turned into derivatives, oh. uh, were marketed on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them, I believe, were sold to Goldman Sachs. What, what, but, wait, what year did that happen? Uh, that happened uh, uh, in, um, under the Kilpatrick administration, mm -hmm. 04, 05, I believe. Okay, okay. Uh, but uh, th they were turned into derivatives. Mm -hmm. They were sold on Wall Street, betting that interest rates were going to go up. And the interest rates went yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. So all that money was lost. Mm. Uh, so as a result of that, now uh, uh, the citizens have to be squeezed for, uh, uh, to make up uh, the money to keep uh, the water system going. And uh, mm -hmm. again, uh, as a, a part of the... Uh, the grand bargain. It's Detroit Water and Sewage Department is really a shell. Okay, uh, it's now run uh, under a state authority uh, known as the uh, Great Lakes Water Authority. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that set the rates. You know, I'm wondering. Uh, they, uh, you know, I got into a little bit of it. I guess when they start having the derivatives, so they were basically betting on all the loans to fail to begin with. So that either way it went, they, they were still going to make money off of it, the failure of it, I, particularly with the housing loans, mm -hmm. they, the derivatives. Yeah. You know, I, I've tried to follow a little bit of this, but mm -hmm. it is a very deep subject. Yeah. Th there's a book on that that's been turned into a movie oh. called The Big Short. Hmm. Uh, uh, it's a, a excellent movie. It, it, it in, in a very understandable way, mm -hmm. uh, walks you through and makes it kind of dramatic. Hmm. Uh, exactly what happened with uh, the collateralized debt obligations, the mortgage-backed securities, mm -hmm. and, and, and how uh, the adjustable rate uh, uh, was used uh, uh, to collateralize uh, these assets. Mm -hmm. And to, uh, just like with the stock market, oh. you know, they pump it to dump it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they pump it up, they're making the uh, increase mm -hmm. as it goes up. And then other, you know, the small people start buying in. And then when they dump risky. it, they're the ones holding the bag and the losses. Yeah. So, you know, th this Some goes over and over again. Okay. Uh, well, let's take another call. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Would you share your name and how you're viewing us, please? Hi, my, my name is Michelle. I'm Thank from you. Detroit. Thank you for calling. And um, I just wanted to say real quick that the gentleman is right about them tearing down beautiful brick structures, two stories, the oh two car God. garages oh. in the Detroit area. Um, this was just recently done not too long ago this summer for a house on Outer Drive and Schaefer that sits across from Sinai, that had sat across from Sinai Grace Hospital. And I could not understand it was rehabitable everything beautiful home mm. and they came in and tore that thing down in a blink of an eye oh wow and mm. yet they will not go into the neighborhoods and tear down some of them frame shacks that are sitting mm -hmm. abandoned open tall 10 feet grass right. i mean they won't touch those mm -hmm. and it's just making me realize the further out 
um, that some people live. My, my, my friend says her neighborhood looked like Katrina came through it, mm-hmm. and she's living in it. Yeah, I understand. But I said something is going on. Well, we we may have to uh, go through our community and, and take pictures ourselves. And uh, when the Hood Research meeting uh, takes place, we meet on the second Saturday at the Daybo Center on Grand River in Wyoming. Uh, just put those together and uh, uh, back up the Realtors Association and go to the city uh, council and uh, to the press and social media to make a big issue out of it. Uh, are you willing to participate? I'm sorry. Are you willing to participate? Yes, oh, I good. am. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Your colleague audience is... I have, I have written um, some information down. I just could not believe some of the things that are going on. <laughs> and believe it. Not really knowing the candidates to vote for is another important issue. Absolutely. A lot of people do not know who a lot of the candidates are. And voting absentee ballot is something I will never do again Mm -hmm. because a lot of absentee ballots were not counted. Yep. And people do not know that. Yep, and they may be substituted for others as well. I I understand what you're saying. Yes, yes, excellent point. People need to know you have to get out there, take a chair, take a lunch, some water. That's right. And be willing to wait in that line. To cash your ballot. To make your vote count. Right. Do That's not an just excellent walk point. Wayne County Community College right. and vote absentee. Yeah. All righty. Don't Thank do you. it, people. Thank you so much Thank for you your please. input. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. We got to, uh, huh? Yes, we, we need to take a 60-second uh, uh, break. Uh, engineer, and we shall be back momentarily. Feedback. Feedback. Hi, this is Theo Broughton. And I am the BDM Pina. Inviting you to join us each Monday at 9 a.m. for Feedback. A positive image production by Hood Research. Encourage others to tune in each Monday on... Comcast Detroit, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Watch WHPR TV Network anywhere. And take us along with you. Feedback, feedback, feedback. All right, thank you. And we are back. And we have had a candidate for the Detroit City Clerk Office to join us in the person of Dietta Wilcoxon. And thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Theo. And we, ha- we have been uh, talking about all of the money that seems to flow in and flow out <laughs> without the residents benefiting from it. Yes. And... Um, I went, we have the uh, two callers on the line. Just hold on just a minute. You have um, another, uh, what do we say, pot of money that, that is being uh, redirected, misused, and abused Yes. without yes. our being benefited. Okay, yes, let, us, yes. let us know about that. We have a federal lawsuit, as you well know, that Robert Davis and I filed against the Illages and the Gorises of the Pistons mm-hmm. over the fact that Detroiters bonded themselves to the tune of $1.5 billion in 1999 and then $500 million additional dollars in 2012 yes. in an effort to make certain that our children did not have to learn uh, in squalor kinds of conditions. That right. They did not have rats, rodents running around the room, mm, uh, water falling from the ceiling onto their heads yes. and their books, sitting up in classrooms with 60-plus yeah. children mm-hmm. uh, in the dead of winter no, uh, and yes. in... Uh, summer-like conditions wherein there's no air conditioning, no ventilation, you would think that Detroiters do not care about their children if they allow them to learn under certain uh, such circumstances, but we, we, we actually uh, spent $2 billion to make certain that that did not happen. Right. The Illages and the Gorises would like to go in and take the school aid money that we bonded ourselves for 
and they would like to repurpose that money and spend it on helping to build uh, Olympia Stadium. Mm. And the law clearly says that they have a right to do that. The problem for them is that the school code also says that they must come back to the people who bonded themselves for one use of that money and ask them if they are willing to allow them to use it for another purpose. Mm. They are avoiding coming to us to ask us. It's total political disrespect in mm -hmm. my estimation. And so we sued them over that fact. Uh, they have been two-fisted about their fight and they've told the judge repeatedly that this is not a voting rights issue. This is a monetary issue and they can deal with the uh, the difficulties that Robert Davis and I have at some later point when it's more convenient for them mm -hmm. uh, but we argued through our attorney that the right to vote is actually the underpinning of our democracy without it our democracy fails mm -hmm. once you take away the right to vote you can't give it back and so we have been working, uh, just Robert, uh, Andrew Patterson, who is our attorney, and I, against half a courtroom full of high-priced lawyers uh, that are arguing vehemently uh, that their position is correct and that ours is incorrect. And they've told people through uh, Butch Hollowell that we've been defeated and we've dismissed our lawsuit and that they were victorious. And you well know that there are two ways to dismiss a lawsuit. It can be dismissed with or without prejudice. We voluntarily dismissed ours without prejudice, which means that we can take that case back to the court at any time. Mm -hmm. What we did was we filed a subsequent lawsuit which lists as parties the uh, school board mm -hmm. because they are the only people under law who have the ability to place the issue of redirecting monies on the ballot. No one else has the authority to do that. So we, we dropped one lawsuit voluntarily keeping it in a holding pattern, filed a new lawsuit. And in that new lawsuit, we also joined the DDA and the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority so that we had all parties before the court that the court needed in order to make an effective decision mm -hmm. in terms of whether or not the Voting Rights Act was implicated and whether those monies were being correctly uh, spent. And uh, needless to say, the parties that are opposing us are not happy about that. But the point of the matter is we are on... Uh, very strong legal footing uh, in our argument, and the judge has said so in one of his orders. So, who's the uh, judge? Judge Goldsmith. Okay, he's the same judge that ruled that Jill Stein's uh, recount effort could go forward. He's the yeah. same judge that ruled that uh, the uh, Arab uh, uh, detainees had to have their relatives know where they are. So mm -hmm. the judge has, I think, demonstrated himself to be a fair and balanced and reasonable person as it relates to legal issues. Mm. So we're, we're, we're thrilled to have him. Hmm. Wonderful. Uh, so we have two pots of money that uh, people are trying to steal yes. to keep from uh, supporting the residents who have taxed themselves up to the gills. Yes. Why don't gamble with that saying? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Let, let, let's see one of the callers on the line uh, what they have to say. Press that button. For Hello, you're on the air. Your name? How you watching us? Good morning, Barbara. Real quick, I know it's time for you to go. For those that would like to see the destruction of the um, affordable care, Google Marco Rubio risk. Corridors, New York Times. Oh, thank you for and that. It gives you a real good rundown on how he started. And one good book, Chokehold, Policing Black Men by Attorney Paul Butler. That's, yes, yes, Chokehold. Right, Paul Butler. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes. All right. Great show. What thank you. Yeah, you know, mm, Chokehold, that is a good book for people to uh, read. Somebody else in there? Yes. Okay. Hello, you're on the air. Well, Hi, good morning. Your name? Uh, How are you watching us? My name is uh, Wynette. I'm watching you on the Internet this morning. I was okay, able thank to get you. you finally. Okay, go ahead. But, uh, I was calling because um, I got my thesis over the weekend, mm. and I always thought and I knew that the summer taxes and the winter taxes were different amounts. And usually... One of them would be less than the other. Well, this time they're both the same. Hmm. And be thought up. 
And I'm wondering how is that possible? So I try to get on on the internet to look it up. Mm-hmm. You can't even view your taxes anymore. Oh, I, this is ridiculous. This, you know what? I hope people see what's happening in the city of Detroit. This is another way of forcing you out of the out mm-hmm. of the city. Okay. Mm-hmm. When I bought this house, it was based on the taxes. Everything. I. It was like a big decision I had to make. Mm-hmm. But if if they're going to overcharge me on taxes, homeowners insurance, car insurance, I mean, why should I, there's nowhere to really to move to in Michigan. So mm-hmm. you would be forced to move out of Michigan. But yeah. I'm just saying, you know, this man, this mayor has cut off people's water. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, we're, we're living like um, this is worse than slavery to me. Yeah, well, That's I do opinion. understand. I, I when understand. When I saw that uh, the documentary on Channel Seven, another thing, you know, after the, the the program, I'm looking in the audience. I don't see any people like us. I see a few, but not a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you would think that Detroit was all white when the riot <laughs> went on. I yeah. mean, this is crazy. So I, I just want to say that I hope people wake up. And Ms. Wilcoxon, I want to give okay. one of your lawn signs. I don't know how I'm going to get it, but please tell us how you, you can get number. a lawn sign. All right, I'm, thank I'm, you so much. You're going to give you the telephone number. Conde, you want a lawn sign? 313-704-2810. Again. 313-704-2810. Got it? Okay, thank, thank you for calling. Well, we are uh, at the end of our program, and I and I must uh, say thank you uh, both to Jean Cunningham, who has brought us a lot of facts and information, and to uh, Clerk Candidate Deanna Wilcoxon, who has updated us on the case. And I need to let you know that this coming Sunday, which is July the 30th, her research will be celebrating its 25th birthday. 25 years her research has been in existence in this community and providing as much information as we can to help us all make better informed decisions. The event is going to begin at 5 p.m. Entertainment by comedian Michael Bonner. Fast Freddy's going to be there as as well. And dinners included. The cost is $45 just to raise money for the broadcast that we bring to you each Monday morning at 9 a.m. And for those of you who um, want to get tickets at the door, I would like you to RSVP at area code 248-234-2371. That's area code 248-234-2371. And for those of you who want to purchase your tickets in advance, the Loving Life Health Food Store on West 7 Mile and Sussex has tickets. And there are also also some tickets here at the station WHPR. But the telephone number for Hood Research again is area code 248-234-2371. And as I always say, it's not necessary for you to know everything. What is necessary is for you to know how to find what you need when you need it. And we at Hood Research seek to gather as much as we can and we present it on this monthly Monday broadcast. And also so at our meeting, which takes place on the second Saturday of each month at the Day Bowl Center on Grand River and Wyoming. And uh, the BD always says, my co-host, if you want to be nothing, do nothing. But you'll never know when you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again. And tune in again next week.